Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for continuing to follow me on my pen journey. We're going to delve into a pen that I haven't done a review on for a long time. It used to be my most popular pen to review many years ago. But a uh, fellow pen enthusiast uh, has lent me this pen, so I need to show it to you. It's a Delta. It's a model that I was not familiar with, had no idea it existed until you showed it to me. It's called a Barocca, which is their uh, coined phrase or coined word for a pen commemorating Baroque design, which is primarily indicated by the patterns that are on the cap, on the blind cap, and also there's a nice pattern in that pretty wide stainless, or sorry, pretty wide sterling silver cap band. Nice engraving. I mean, this is a classic example of Delta. Apparently this was made around 2016, so it was towards the end of uh, Delta's reign as a pen manufacturer. Um, it's made extremely well, and this is a, a pen that pretty much makes me miss the fact that they're no longer producing pens. And I know there are a number of Italian pen manufacturers that have tried to resurrect some of Delta's uh, techniques and skills and resins and everything else, but I've, I've used those pens. I don't own any of them, and I still pine for my Deltas. So we're going to look into this a little bit more deeply, take a look at the parts, how it's put together, and it has a very interesting 1.1 stub fusion nib, which I'm looking forward to writing with. So Mr. Crab is going to do one more twirly twirly by so you can appreciate the pen from many different angles. And we'll dive into it and like I say it's a little bit of a nostalgic journey into the past. So let's uh, take a look at this pen and see if it's interesting. So it does feel substantial in the hand, which to me is a Delta trait that is almost in every pen that I've ever touched that they made. The cap unscrews in less than one turn. That's nice. Put the pen in hand. We'll see that it fits very well in the hand. It's a nice beefy section, and it does post deep and it posts securely. You do feel the weight of that cap. We'll give you the weights of the pen and you can hopefully visualize or feel what that would be like in your hand. Like I said, it posts securely, but certainly back weights the pen. And its pen is big enough to be used without posting, but for those that need to post, it does post. So the captured converter is some people referred to it as. So this end cap unscrews and this is the top of the converter that sticks out. So you can, you know, unscrew and screw or fill or empty, whatever. I tend to enjoy undoing the section and actually watching what's going on. Um, but you have an option with this design, which they made in a lot of pens, which we'll look at after this one. The converter screws into place into the section. Everything is just nice and beefy, which again is a Delta feature. So let's look at how this design evolved over the time from, with some of the examples from my collection. Let's take a look at the parts of the Barocco pen. They're all well made. We have that um, the modern uh, Delta logo with the inverse nib design. They always made great clips, very stiff but still usable. Nice uh, curve there. They also were known for their cap bands, and this is a sterling silver cap band, which they used a lot on the Dulce Vitas, at least the earlier models. Later models, they went to a stainless steel band here. Same ornate design, though. 
All of these parts are substantial. All of them are very well made. I mean, this is a classic example, I think, of Delta at its height, even though this pen was from 2016, as much as I can gather. And it says annual numbered edition, so that would make sense. And there's that logo design again. Very thick walls. It says stainless steel insert here with the, uh, I think, faux blind cap, as people would call it. Again, with that same Baroque design, in which uh, Baroque is kind of like an aberration of it. Currently, if you look up Baroque beads, a real uh, supplemental drink that has uh, controversial properties, but that's there. So this is a very substantial converter. Delta is known for making good converters. It screws into the section, which makes it nice and secure. And this is that top of it that you can use to activate it without having to unscrew the section. To me, it doesn't have an appeal to me, but some people it might. It's just a plastic injection molded feed, which they used for the vast majority of Delta pens. And it has a fusion nib. And it's one that I don't have. It's a 1.1 millimeter. So it has a nice big square end on the end of the nib. The other thing, because I haven't pulled nibs out of many of my Delta pens, but there's the goat. So it's definitely made by Bach. Interesting that they buried their logo deep inside the nib. One of the things that I've not seen before is uh, whatever ink was used in this pen before uh, I was lent it, uh, it certainly did a number on this nib. Both the 18 karat gold overlay, the fusion nib, and also to the actual stainless steel nib, which again, I haven't seen before that type of degradation. So I have a number of, of fusion nib pens, which we'll look at, and some of them were in use for quite a while. Uh, when I was working, they became my everyday carries, and I don't have any issues with any of them. So I'm not certain what ink was in here, but whatever it was, it was not kind to metals that I think would be noble. And maybe from the looks of that, there was some kind of varnish or coating on the nib, which the ink attacked. I've shut off the LEDs and we just have some diffused sunlight coming in. We're going to bring in the LED to look inside the cap. There's no liner and there's no ledge there for the section to seal against. So it looks like it'll keep the nib wet, but there's, uh, you know, reducing inside of there to fit on the section reduces that amount of air that the nib is in when the cap is closed so that could have been done better but there's no metal in there no screws or whatever so there's not going to get anything to corrode and, and hopefully that is a, an airtight seal i'm assuming this finial is screwed down onto the cap and that's how the clip is attached so delta design i think from the early days had that dual fold type look to it with blind caps, sometimes same color, sometimes black, or most of the time black. They use the roller clip design, which I think first showed up in the 20s in the Wall Ever Sharp pens. So they kind of mixed designs. This pen is from the early 2000s it's a millennial pen and here's one from 2016 and there's a lot of similarity so Delta didn't do a lot of changes they pretty much took a basic design and exploited it this also has a sterling band on it a little bit ornate and if we look at the top we'll see the older style Delta logo which was just a stylized D and then we have that one with the inverse nib, as I call it. This uh, cap doesn't unscrew. The blind cap doesn't unscrew, but the cap unscrews in about one turn, and we'll see a 
A nice nib. Classic, again, design, ornate. Could be made by Bach. I didn't pull it out. But there's that stylized D on the nib. That was their logo until they changed it. Now if we go to a similar looking pen. This one's probably from 2014-15. Again, a stainless steel band. Earlier Dolce Vitas had uh, a sterling silver band. So it's a subtle difference between the two metals. And I haven't had any real sterling tarnish much on my deltas. This one also has the faux blind cap that unscrews to show the top of the converter. So that design, which I think the Federico may have been the first model that I remember you use, used it. But these other pens all have it, including this wooden one, which is called Sea Wood. And I recently re-oiled and waxed the wood because it had gotten a little bit dry. And there's that full blind cap to expose that captured converter. So here's some comparisons. I just picked up some deltas. I do have a number of deltas. I was quite aggressive in collecting when they were still readily available. So here's the Dolce Vita Oro in um, all the orange resin. And it has a fusion nib, same size, same design, but obviously, as you can see, survived quite a bit more. Here's a Marina which is a pen that was in daily use for well over six months by me. And again, the nib looks great. And here's the King Tut edition. And again, with a fusion nib. Delta was not shy about the size of their pens, and the vast majority of them were quite large and, to me, very comfortable writing instruments. I enjoyed the design, the engineering, the, and especially the aesthetics. Let's zoom in on those nibs. So it's hard to tell over the camera how much this is going to pick it up, but if you can see the difference between the Barocco Fusion nib and these other three in regards to the color of the gold, the luster of the gold, the luster of the stainless steel nib that's underneath of that gold overlay. There were concerns about the gold overlay coming off, but in none of my pens have I've ever seen that happen. This is the only time I've ever seen any type of degradation on any Delta nib. And again, as, as we saw, the later ones at least were made by Bach. I think the earlier ones probably in the 1990s or when Delta started in the 80s, they may have made their own, but that's just my speculation. So I got a pretty full fill there. I went up and down three times. The second time up, it pretty much filled all the way. And I put in that Pilot Blue Black out of the big bottle and I used my ink miser to fill it because obviously this pen doesn't even fit into the bottle, let alone reach the ink that's down the bottle. And I had to coat the inside of this with a water-based uh, acrylic, polyurethane acrylic, made three coatings and it has stopped ink from seeping into the ink miser. So now it's a fully functional device. I'm going to pour the ink back in the bottle. Yes, it's my largest bottle of ink, but very impractical, so you need to transfer it into another device like the Ink Miser to fill your pen. Now that I've had some time with this pen and nib and the Pilot Ink, I think it's time to show you how it writes. Less than one turn for the uncapping, that's always good. It fits well in the hand. That section is beefy. We'll give you those dimensions. Half the weight is in the cap. So the pen, without it being posted, is on, feels on the light side. But I think a lot of that has to do with the size. You kind of think it should weigh a little bit more, but it doesn't. It's not a pen that I would write with posted unless I had no choice. In doing my research, I have not found a version of this pen with a black barrel here. All the versions that I find have a white barrel. It still has a black blind cap, a black section, and a black cap cap. This is kind of an anomaly. Don't know whether that 12 out of 2016 is 12 with a black barrel or 12 in total. Um, 
something it will probably always remain a mystery. So let's see how this nib lays down ink. So as you hopefully heard with the mic next to the nib, this is smooth, but smooth is deceiving. This is a sharp stub. I'd call it more of an italic nib. I mean, you can definitely get fine lines, horizontal, and certainly pretty wide lines vertically with really no effort at all. This nib does require um, a little bit of pressure to write with, but I'm happy with the uh, line width and variation that you can get with this type of designed nib with that grind on it. It doesn't appear to have tipping material, which is typical of a, of a stub. So I usually don't rate pens like this, but let me do a rating. And I'm going to give it a 9.2. I'm going to give it two checks for the nib because I like the nib. Uh, and I'm going to give it one check for build. And that's it. I'm not a fan of the design. It's not grown on me, considering the other deltas that I have, which, which you saw some in my comparisons. It's kind of bland and kind of nondescript. And that design element just doesn't do anything for me. So overall, I find this an interesting pen. It might find its way into my collection. We'll see. But, you know, I'm glad I had a chance to experience it. It's been many years since I did a review of any, any pen from Delta, so I've now had an opportunity, and maybe some of you that are newer viewers have not seen my uh, Deltas. So we're near the end of this video, and we're still here in, I wouldn't call it lockdown, but I'm certainly in, in New Jersey and the uh, United States is trying to avoid spread of the coronavirus and trying to avoid our medical system being totally overloaded and hopefully we can all do our part and we'll get through this. That's all we can hope for right now. But, you know, be kind to everybody because that doesn't cost anything and we all need people to act rationally and, and do what they need to do to, for themselves and also for those around them. So let's get together and be friends and be friendly. So we've reached the end of this video, so thank you for watching. You saw how it started right up after my little talk. So this is the end of this video. And we're at the end of the paper, so my writing is really degraded. We're going to say bye for now until the next video. And I really kind of like this nib. It's one I haven't played with before. <laughs>